How many times have you told yourself, man, I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders. Everything is unbearable. What's the point of getting promoted? What's the point of advancement? What's the point of getting ahead anywhere in life? How many guys have said, you know what? What's the point of bringing a child into this world? I mean, it's the craziness that's going on. But imagine saying all that, and yet you have all the money in the world. You've got the power, you got the influence, you got the pizzazz, you got the social media influence, and yet you're cynical and skeptical and pessimistic about everything that's going on in your life. Well, who's saying that? The guy who was saying all that was the richest and wisest king who ever lived, King Solomon. So as we dive into Ecclesiastes chapter four this week, we've been unpacking the last previous weeks, chapters one, two, and three, and beforehand, we unpacked all of Proverbs, which is written in his youth, in his heyday, in his prime, which is written by King Solomon, known as the richest and wisest king who ever lived. And as I quote in King Solomon, he says, everything in life is like chasing after the wind. Imagine you doing that, chasing after the wind. By the way, can you even see it? Can you grab it? Can you hold it? Is it tangible, intangible? See, the wind is felt, but can never be touched. You can't grab it. You can't put it away. You can't put it in your refrigerator. You can't put it in your house. But King Solomon says, everything you do in life is like chasing the wind. Now, hold on, real quick. Matt, you're saying that my advance, my desire to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, to be debt free, to advance and get promoted in my career, my life, to expand and grow my business, all that stuff, according to King Solomon, the richest and wisest king who ever lived said it's all meaningless. How arrogant of him to say something like that. I need to get somewhere in my life. Good for him that he had all the money in the world. Good for him that he had all the power. Good for him that he had all the wives and the kids, but I want to get mine. So here's my three takeaways from reading Ecclesiastes chapter four, which I encourage you to do so too as well. Now, listen, I just want to disclaim, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a deacon, I don't have a degree in religious studies, I'm not a DVM, divinity in, in, in ministries or anything like that. I'm just an entrepreneur. I'm just a lay person in a church just trying to figure out world views and life and money and success, prosperity, wealth and happiness through the lens of an entrepreneur. So I encourage you to also go out and read the Bible to yourself. Take what I have to say, if you, whatever two cents I have to share with you, but you go ahead and have your journey and have your relationship with God. Here's lesson number one. Everything in life is meaningless without purpose. And according to King Psalm, without an eternal purpose from a godly perspective. So let's read Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse one through three. It goes like this. I saw the tears of the oppressed and they have no comforter. Power was on the side of their oppressors, and they have no comforter. And I declared that the dead, who had already died, are happier than the living, who are still alive. But better than both is the one who has never been born, who has never ever seen evil that is done under the sun. And I saw that all the toil and all the achievements spring from one person's envy of another. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. As I mentioned last week, if you're just doing the do, well, then right, King Solomon is right. If you're simply just chasing money and status and recognition, if you're here just to get paid and get laid, well then King Solomon is right, because he did all that. And even then he says, I had all the girls, all the wives, got a bunch of kids, got a lot, a lot of money, a lot of land, a lot of countries, a bunch of chariots, a bunch of gold. Even in the Bible, he mentions that even the shields of his soldiers were hammered out of six shekels of gold. Imagine that, imagine being a soldier and they outfit you with a golden shield. That's the life of King Solomon. He had everything. And even then he says it's all meaningless without an eternal purpose. You know, Christmas is coming up here pretty soon. And how many guys remember the Christmas story of Ebenezer Scrooge? Remember he had his faithful and loyal employee, Bob Cratchit. And Ebenezer Scrooge was just this cynical, just penny pinching, just a nasty guy to be around. And yet his employee, was serving his employer with grace, with loyalty, with dedication, is constantly there. And lo and behold, he never complained about his problems, never complained about his issues, and he wasn't getting paid a wage that was enough to feed his family, who was cold, starving, and how many remember Tiny Tim, who was disabled? And it had to take a shaking up of the three different ghosts of Christmas, past, present, and future, to shake him up, to say, you know what? What are you doing this all for, man? And he woke up the next morning and he became a great giver. He understood the purpose of his business and he just wanted to see people happy. So whatever it is that you're doing, your pursuit of happiness, whatever that may be, your life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, however you define that, does it have 
an eternal purpose. Of course, you gotta ask yourself, which leads me to number two. Do you have a running buddy? Who is somebody you can trust and depend on in all aspects of your life? Who can you depend on in your faith? Who can you depend on your, with your family, outside of just family? Who can you depend on your finances and your business life? Who can you depend on in the gym? Who can depend on as men to men? And you know, we did a video on our podcast about who do men talk to when they go through some issues? And a lot of men says, I don't talk to anybody. But King Solomon says here, there's nothing more powerful than somebody you can rock with. Who is your running buddy? Let's take a look at this Ecclesiastes chapter four. It reads like this. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can either help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. By the way, did you catch that last part? Who is that third strand that King Solomon is talking about? He said just two, right? Right, anybody? Who's that third person? Who's that third entity? King Solomon is referencing God that God is supposed to be the third strand, that in that rope, as you're braiding a rope together, not just with two strands, but with three strands, and how powerful that strand is with three cords, three strands, just not two. I know your husband and wife, your business partner that you trust, but imagine that third one weaving in the third strand amongst the two. That's not easily broken. Why? Because God's in the middle. It's a God-centered approach to how you attack anything that you got going on in life. Now keep this in mind too as well. Earlier in Proverbs, the book before Ecclesiastes, King Solomon says this about iron sharpening iron. Let's check out this proverb. Iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. So you have to understand that we are uniquely designed to hold each other accountable and to be held accountable to him as well. And if you don't have that accountability partner, you don't have that running buddy, well, you are alone. And what does King Solomon say here in Ecclesiastes about somebody that's all alone by themselves because you didn't recruit or attract somebody to help you in your life and your business endeavor or just simple friendship in life? What does he say about that? Pity anyone who falls down with nobody else to pick them back up. So if you're reading this and ask yourself this question, when's the last time I recruited a friend? When's the last time I hired somebody new to bring a new energy, to bring new excitement, to have new development in my company? When's the last time you attracted somebody that you can rock with in the gym? Think about it, for most men, they don't make any new friends after high school, after college, after the military. If you're in your 30s and 40s right now, when's the last time, honestly speaking, when's the last time you actually invested in making a friend, in investing in friendship? And you haven't done so already, and you don't have three, four, five dollars to call. To call as your friends in your dark moments, well, King Solomon says, man, Find somebody like that in your life. And the sooner you have that somebody in your life, the better your life will be. So if that's you, make sure you please put in the comment section below, I am careful who I pick as heroes. And my lesson number three is I wrap up with this. Be careful who you pick as your heroes. Let's read what King Solomon says about picking who to look up to. It reads like this. Better a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish king who no longer knows how to heed a warning. The youth may have come from prison to the kingship or may have been born in poverty within his kingdom. I saw that all who lived and walked under the sun followed the youth, the king's successor. There was no end to all the people who was before them, but those who came later was not pleased with the successor. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. So whether you decide to follow the old rich one or the young king, guess what? Many people were let down with whomever they chose. Coming to Solomon, that was like chasing after the wind. So your job is to constantly be on the lookout, not only for the right friends and writing buddies, but also who you look up to in terms of who you take as leadership and mentorship and guidance in your life. So here's some three Proverbs that King Solomon wrote earlier in the book of Proverbs of who to look like to lead you in your life. Not the guys that you see on TV playing sports or the celebrities you see in Hollywood. Lord knows these guys are a bunch of mess. You just know them for a couple hours of your life. Deion Sanders says this, you see athletes and actors for three hours on a movie or two and a half hours on a, on a football field or basketball court, you don't know their life. So you have to be careful of who you decide to influence yourself, your children, 
the people that you love and care about and get them to the next level. Be careful and mindful of who they are. So here's some ideas in Proverbs of who to look for. Number one, the way of the arrogant fool who rejects God's wisdom is right in his own eyes, but a wise and prudent man is he who listens to counsel. Second proverb, a wise man suspects danger and cautiously avoids evil, but the fool is arrogant and careless. Third proverb, a flippant, arrogant fool rejects his father's instruction and correction, but he who is willing to learn regards and keeps in mind a reprimand acquires good sense. Now some of you guys say, man, I don't have a father. Totally get it. Well, who is that father figure and father role in your life? Which by the way, that's my desire and intention and expectation of this YouTube channel is that we rebirth men in our country, that we rebirth the leader of the nuclear family, that we encourage the next wave of generation of men, whether younger or older or in between, that men need to take the rightful position as a leader in their home, leader in our communities and our cities, so we can lead once again as a nation. So these are some proverbs, and by the way, you can continue to unpack who King Solomon chooses to say, who's wise and who's a fool. Remember, go back to Proverbs chapter one. He says, if there's anything to gain in life, gain a lot of wisdom and understanding. But also keep this in mind too as well. Ecclesiastes, this book, as I'm continuing to unpack this, and right now for the first four chapters of Ecclesiastes, I see now an older, cynical, pessimistic man who had everything, who had all the money, who had all the riches, had all the girls and, and the properties and assets and all the things that you can ever want for in this world. He had all that, status, influence, power, you name it. But all that stuff was meaningless about these three things that we discovered here in chapter four of Ecclesiastes. But that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your comments. Your feedback, please, if you agree with me, you don't agree with me, please, please put it in the comment section below. That being said, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here, you Seven Figure Squad. And if you haven't seen the other episodes here of the Wealth and Wisdom series, check out all that is available here. Proverbs 1 through 31 and the last three episodes also of Ecclesiastes 1, 2, and 3. That being said, appreciate you tuning in. From Dallas, Texas, I'm a mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be mighty smart today.